Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, of course, this is Shackleton. In this uh, video series, I'm going to talk all about the Antarctica, you know, what's happening down there. We've recently had some record high temperatures on the Antarctica Peninsula, reaching, I believe, 20.75 degrees Celsius, which is a you know, ridiculously warm temperature there. And uh, also, a paper recently came out about a week or so ago called, titled, Early Last Interglacial Ocean Warming Drove Substantial Ice Mass Loss from Antarctica. So clearly, um, when the ocean temperature is warm, it undercuts the ice shelves in Antarctica and causes a lot of ice melt. It's not so much the warm atmospheric temperatures that uh, melt ice in Antarctica, because Antarctica is generally well, well below freezing, you know, except for these anomalies that have been occurring um, recently on the Antarctic Peninsula. But it's it's the the warming of the ocean that is that is key. So I'm going to talk about all of these things um, in this video and the next few. So hopefully Shackleton. Uh, sticks around, keeps me company. Okay, so I'll go to the beginning here. So this is my uh, blog, paulbeckwith.net. I haven't uh, posted anything for about a week. Um, there was a, uh, you know, I, I, there, there, there was a death in, in my family. Um, my not in my immediate family. My, my stepfather um, passed away um, late last week. It was very quick um, and it's very sudden. Uh, he was 93. He lived a good long life, but it's still very upsetting. So anyway, um, so this is my um, pa blog, paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating to my PayPal account to support all of my ongoing videos and also videos that I've done in, in the past. So on Twitter, I'm at Paul H. Beckwith, and I've tweeted out a couple things recently here you may have seen. So Antarctic Island hits record temperature of 20.7 Celsius degrees, over 20 for the first time. Um, Rising ocean temperatures drove the melting of Antarctic ice sheets and caused extreme sea level rise more than 100,000 years ago. During, so that was during the last interglacial, also known as the Eemian. So this is the, the paper that I'll be focusing on for the most part in this video. And I do, I do just want to show you a couple interesting things. This is, um, this is the uh, Arctic um, temperatures, Arctic ocean temperatures. The temperature anomaly from October through December averaged from 1900 to 20 to this year 2019. And look at all the red here. Um, this is a very strong El Nino year, and you know the red is just dominating. I mean, it's getting warmer and warmer. And this is these anomalies here are up to eight uh, degrees uh, Celsius. So this is a tweet um, that um, I retweeted. It's from uh, Zach Lab. Um, Showed, showed this data. Okay, so let's get into the article here. The ancient Antarctic ice melt increased sea levels by three plus meters and it could happen again. So this is the, um, the University of New South Wales in Australia. Um, the, the prime author was uh, from there, prime authors. There was a whole bunch of authors from many, many different countries um, in this paper. So rising ocean temperatures, well, it has to be the rising ocean temperatures that melt Antarctic ice significantly because it's too cold, the air temperature is too cold above to melt ice. But as I showed you, um, as I mentioned, you know, we're reaching over 20 degrees Celsius. Um, 20 is um, multiplied by 9 fifths and I add 32. 20 degrees Celsius is 68 Fahrenheit. Okay, just for the conversion. Um, so basically, there's, uh, in, and it's showing, there's, there, there's one of the ice, um, 
ice uh, samples and there's fine layers of volcanic ash in the ice and you could date those so you know exactly you know what year you are in in the particular sample so mass melting of the west antarctic ice sheet was a major cause of high sea levels during the last interglacial so 129,000 to 116 years ago um, is what was in this research that was published just um, the date on this is February 12th. So it was just published February 12th in PNAS, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So this ice loss of, on the West Antarctic ice sheet caused a multimeter rise in global sea levels. It took less than two Celsius of ocean warming for it to occur. Okay, and it happened early in the last interglacial. Okay, um, so they use the uh, layers of volcanic ash to date and to pinpoint when the mass melting took place and basically most of the ice loss occurred it says within the first millennium but it's more like within the first 200 years according you know so according to the study you know could could you know and and it's probably missing feedbacks that, that make it much faster than that uh, melting was likely caused by less than 2c of ocean warming and that has huge implications to what's going on today because um, during the last interglacial, polar ocean temperatures were likely less than 2C warmer than today. Okay, but it's a good period to, to study. Now, the East Antarctic ice sheet is grounded on bedrock, which is above sea level for the most part. Not everywhere, so it's more protected. It's the West Antarctic ice sheet. It rests on the sea floor. Um, you know, often, you know, five, 7,000 feet below sea level. And it's fringed by large areas of floating ice called ice shelves that protect the, so the ice sheet is sitting on the land and the ice shelf is floating on the coastlines. So the thing is, is if the, as warmer ocean water goes into cavities under the ice shelves, the ice melts from below, thinning the shelves, and that sort of removes the buttress which, which keeps the ice sheets on the continent. So this is an area, now normally ice cores are taken by drilling deep down through the ice to the bedrock, but this is, a specific, this is an interesting area. It's called the Blue Ice Area, or BIA, and there's very strong high-density winds. They're called catabatic winds. They come down from the high elevation regions of Antarctica, and they scour, they, they remove all the snow, blow all the snow off the surface of the ice and they scour the ice and ice is lost due to sublimation and you get all of these pockets and because of the nature of the way the ice is flowing and the winds etc you can actually walk across the to different regions and take surface samples and that gives you a record going back in time because as the ice at the top is scoured away it reveals the, the older ice down below Okay, so it says, it says that here, blue ice areas are the perfect laboratory for scientists due to their unique topography. These high density catabatic winds blow over the mountains, remove the top layer of snow on the ice, erode the exposed ice. As the ice is removed, ancient older ice flows up to the surface, so you get an insight into the ice sheet's history just by walking, just by going along the top and extracting samples. So they use horizontal ice core analysis, if you like, as opposed to vertical. So instead of drilling kilometers into the ice, they walk across the blue ice area and they travel back through millennia, thousands of years. And then they can reconstruct what was going on in the past. And looking at the isotopes and so on, um, and looking at the volcanic ash and rocks and things, um, they can also ancient DNA from bacteria trapped in the ice and trace gas samples in the ice. They can, um, they all, all these things support the idea that, um, that it's, you, you take a horizontal uh, ice core if you like. Now these ice age cycles which happen about every 100,000 years due to the changing orbit, Earth, change of Earth's orbit around the sun, they're separated by warm interglacial periods. So the last interglacial, you know, the present interglacial is of course called the Holocene. The past one was called the Eocene, okay? And during the last interglacial, the Eocene, global sea levels were between six to nine meters higher than present day, although they, some scientists think that could have been 11 meters higher. Now, 
about it's estimated that about two meters of that would be accounted for from Greenland. Ocean expansion from warmer temperatures and melting glaciers would cause less than a one meter increase. Okay, so that just adds to three meters. So if it's six to nine meters, then that means that the, the bulk of it, the rest of it has to come from Antarctica. So from Antarctica, we'd have three to six meters um, or three to um, nine meters even of, of sea level rise, global sea level means sea level rise from Antarctica. We get about five meters from the West Antarctic ice sheet. If we had more than five meters and then anything exceeding the five meters would have to come from the East, East Antarctic ice sheet. So basically the West Antarctic ice sheet sitting in water, the water's getting warmer and warmer. So the melt of ice is increasing. Okay, and uh, basically there was some modeling done and it suggested that a 3.8 meter sea level rise would occur during the first thousand years of a 2C warmer ocean. Most of this sea level rise occurred. Okay, so you'd have the loss of the ice shelves and then within the first couple hundred years, according to this, so, so I mean the time frames you can dispute, but the, the um, course of events is probably quite quite likely, you know, so you'd lose the ice shelves, then you get a fast nonlinear uh, increase in sea level rise as the ice sheets accelerated and cal accelerated and they're calving in, into the ocean. Um, and uh, so, so the, you know, there's all of these positive feedbacks between a warming ocean, ice shelf collapse, ice sheet melt. So there's probably a tipping point um, and as we reach that tipping point, only a small increase in temperature would trigger abrupt ice sheet melt and a multimeter rise in global sea level rise. Okay, so, um, you know, so this, this study highlighted that the Antarctic ice sheet may lay actually close to this tipping point. Um, and it would commit us to rapid sea level rise unless we cooled the planet by solar radiation management techniques. Okay, uh, so we may be very, very close to this tipping point. Um, okay, so anyway, so let's have a look at some of the, uh, so, so this is all on the paper, and I'll discuss the, um, the PDF of the paper um, shortly, but let's look at some of the air temperatures over Antarctic, you know, um, in the last week or two. So this is a BBC report showing that Antarctic Island hits record temperature of 20.75 degrees Celsius. So that's about 70 um, Fahrenheit, close to 70 Fahrenheit. So this temperature was logged on Seymour Island, which is off the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. So I went to Google Earth. Well, first of all, this is Antarctica. This is the Antarctic Peninsula we're talking about. So Seymour Island is off the Arctic Peninsula near the tip. Okay, and I'll probably refer back to this map fairly frequently. So on Google Earth, if, I, if you Google, um, just Google Google Earth, open up the application, do a search for Seymour Island, and here's Seymour Island right here. Okay, this allows me to see where it is um, and to get the, um, if you put the mouse on the point and read the latitude and longitude coordinates, you can get them, you can read them down here. And then you can go into Earth uh, Null School and basically move the cursor around until you're as close as you can get, like, like expand the scale. So you zoom in, go as close as you can get to the coordinates that were given in Google Earth right here. And you can, uh, you know, the resolution of the map isn't, you, doesn't allow you to see the island, but uh, you know that you're very, very close to it there. And then what you can do is you can look at what happens over time. So 